as Pat indicated, the, uh, my speech today here is, uh, uh, addresses the issue of uh, how to make uh, the recovery uh, sustainable. Um, we uh, are witnessing, after a few years of uh, um, not particularly good uh, figures, uh, a stream of uh, indicators uh, which uh, seem to point in the right direction. But everybody knows the, about the fragility uh, of this. Uh, also, one knows about the disappointment that we have had uh, in the past. So the, the point was uh, is that what kind of you know policy uh, uh, accompanying this at the national and at the uh, European level one should put in place uh, in order to uh, increase the chances of the recovery being uh, um, uh, being sustainable. Now. Um, over the past months, uh, economic news have been uh, encouraging. We have had, uh, um, uh, of the six quarters of uh, uh, contraction in the euro area, GDP surprised on the upside. Uh, we had uh, the second quarter expanding 0.3% uh, uh, compared to the, uh, to, the pre to the previous quarter. I have here. Here is the, my first slide. I don't have many slides, so don't worry about uh, about the um, the presentation uh, on that uh, on that front. So uh, the 0 0.3 it was higher than what we had expected in our spring uh, spring forecast, and the the outturn was driven by positive surprises in a number of uh, uh, large member states. I mean France and Germany first and first and foremost but also from temporary factors which uh, um, like uh, like uh, the weather which is not going to be uh, to, to continue we have to say that uh, the um, recovery and the uh, news was more positive also on a number of vulnerable countries i mean we had spectacular growth in portugal uh, uh, for instance uh, quarter quarter on quarter um, with the also the composition of the you can see it you can start to see here you see the, the domestic demand the, the bar in red which uh, you know after disappointing and beyond the negative side for several quarters is now showing the the uh, the upside so uh, the uh, what would be a positive thing if confirmed is that not only we have we are into a higher uh, growth path but also the composition of growth is uh, it goes in the right direction. We want more domestic demand in core countries. We want more export foreign demand in uh, um, in vulnerable uh, in vulnerable countries. Um, and this is uh, so to make it sustainable. We need to. In, it has to be balanced also at the euro area level. And this composition is uh, uh, is I think the right uh, the right one. Now this is a hard indicator. Uh, is uh, um, uh, Q2. Um, but we have seen in the past several weeks, not uniform, uh, but a, quite a, a consistent string of indicators actually pointing to the right, uh, uh, to the right direction. Um, we can see it here in my other slide. This is the um, survey indicators, the economic sentiment, the composite uh, uh, output, uh, PMI, and actually I was looking in coming here this morning that we have the release on uh, the latest uh, PMI, uh, PMI, which is also point to the right direction. I think it's the seven, 27th month high uh, for the euro area um, uh, as a whole. So uh, the expansion of foreign demand also you know, would confirm that in a number of more vulnerable countries uh, that uh, um, outlook uh, for a recovery may they gain traction in the in in the course of the next uh, uh, quarter now the picture that i have just painted is uh, also evident in the latest uh, data for ireland we just had uh, uh, a few days ago the um, release on the, on q2 for ireland it came uh, uh, a little uh, a few days after the the q2 for the euro area as a whole and the positive growth of 0.4% quarter on quarter shows that Ireland is growing again after a challenging uh, year. Uh, and I especially take comfort uh, in the positive export growth on both uh, annual and uh, quarterly uh, measures. And there has been, uh, you all know, the, the features of exports uh, for uh, Ireland, the impressive switch 
from merchandise export to services in the face of uh, expiring pharmaceutical patents is another testament to the ability of the Irish economy to, con to constantly adjust and reinvent uh, uh, itself, which will continue to pay off as trading partner demand picks up. Irish households have rightly prioritize paying off debts over new purchases for several years, but the positive growth of 0.7% compared to the last quarter suggested uh, uh, sustained employment uh, uh, creation and stabilizing house prices that we have seen over the last quarter uh, are, uh, you know, they have a chance uh, to uh, boost domestic demand and put also the Irish recovery on a more sustainable uh, uh, basis. Now, Ireland has made major strides in improving competitiveness, which has resulted in lower inflation and lower increases in unit labor costs compared to trading uh, partners. Um, however, this also affects nominal uh, GDP developments, and it means that uh, via, let's say, the so-called denominator uh, effect, it means the progress uh, on uh, fiscal and debt ratio is lower than one may uh, uh, may would like, but we know that the tension here between, uh, let's say, fiscal adjustment uh, and uh, on the one hand uh, and regaining competitiveness on the other hand uh, has, is uh, showing up in, uh, uh, in the uh, recovery of competitiveness and lower inflation than in, 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 trading, in trading partners. Uh, so it is important, therefore, that when we look at the uh, development of the fiscal uh, data, that this is not due, it should not be due to lack of uh, efforts, but rather to the double challenge of simultaneously putting public finance on a, on a sustainable footing and restoring uh, competitiveness. <coughs> Financial markets, they start to recognize that, uh, um, that things are uh, getting better. Uh, signs of stabilization and normalization are now uh, appearing and coming through. You can see it uh, in, the, in these slides. Uh, European equity markets have performed well over recent months, underpinned by stronger macroeconomic data. They have also le uh, been less uh, affected by, uh, than some other regions by market concerns over the anticipated, which did not happen eventually, withdrawal of uh, the Fed's monetary stimulus and have not un been unduly affected by the volatility of some emerging uh, uh, markets. I was uh, uh, at the G20 uh, summit in St. Petersburg uh, uh, only two to three weeks ago, uh, and it was for the first time in a number of years that uh, the euro area was not at the epicenter of the, uh, considered to be at the epicenter of the crisis uh, and uh, uh, focusing the whole, um, the whole attention. Uh, obviously, there was a parallel meeting on Syria, which uh, clearly uh, got a lot of, uh, of attention. But when we came to discuss the economy, the issue was uh, um, the discussion on the tapering by the, Fe by the Fed and the robustness of employment creation in the, in the US, and on the other hand, uh, the discussion on uh, the strength of the emerging, uh, of the emerging economies. So it was uh, reasonably comfortable, uh, um, I have to say, being there uh, after, um, after many years where we were uh, finger pointed for uh, you know, creating problems for the rest uh, of, the global, um, of the global economy. Um, we have always uh, clearly to be careful in this because uh, what uh, we always uh, have experienced in the past uh, is that uh, as soon as we had some um, you know, reasonably good data, instead of uh, fostering the momentum uh, and uh, using it for uh, doing more and get on the on a more uh, sustainable and sustained recovery, Usually, uh, policymakers uh, they sit back and say, "Well, I mean, fine. Uh, you know, the financial markets are, are uh, not worried anymore, so we can relax." So, my main message today is that we cannot relax, uh, and we, indeed, we should foster this uh, more positive uh, um, data in order to make uh, with the right policy choices in order to make it uh, uh, sustainable. So, this uh, uh, trend of stabilization are driven by economic data. 
uh, but also by uh, monetary policy uh, actions, announcements, and, uh, and expectations. Um, in spite of this, uh, uh, financial markets remain fragile, highly reliant on the market mood, and a continuous uh, policy uh, support. Now, in most of the program uh, and vulnerable countries, uh, sovereign bonds uh, uh, spreads have uh, narrowed. This uh, reflects uh, reduced political uncertainty and continuous structural and fiscal reforms undertaken by member states, especially the vulnerable, the vulnerable ones. Uh, it is especially noticeable in the case of Ireland uh, through the success, successful auctions of long dated debt and low secondary market yields, uh, which is uh, a testimony of the uh, progress uh, that uh, Ireland has, uh, uh, has made. Now, overall, I mean, out of this picture here, uh, the conclusion is that uh, in the uh, global economy, we are not anymore in the you know, three speed recovery, which was uh, preached by, especially by the IMF only uh, a couple of months ago before uh, the summer, where the indication was uh, there was uh, the emerging economies as a block powering ahead. There was a second league of uh, the US and Japan catching up and becoming more robust and the hopeless uh, laggards, uh, which was uh, Europe. I think the picture has become considerably more, um, let's say, complex uh, and more of, uh, you know, multi-speed than uh, we had uh, only um, a few months ago. So growth in the major advanced economies outside the Euro area is gradually firming, uh, although doubts on the robustness of job creation in the US led the Fed, as I indicated, to postpone the start of tapering of asset uh, purchases. Emerging markets, um, economies, yes, growth uh, continues there, but news have been uh, less uh, positive. Growth has lost momentum, uh, momentum in China. Um, Brazil and Russia have performed uh, poorly, and also uh, concerns as uh, 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 on the solidity of the banking and financial system in a number of emerging economies, India uh, in particular, have, uh, have emerged. So we are in uh, for a, a gradual recovery at multiple uh, speeds. Um, for Europe, I think the uh, recomposition, uh, especially with uh, more doubts on the growth of emerging economies, imply that there, is, uh, the, there are some downside risks from the external side, which, has, uh, which have uh, uh, increased. And this, considering also the trade relations that we have with the rest of the world, may not be dramatic, provided that we foster the, let's say, domestic momentum uh, for, uh, um, for growth. So domestic demand in Europe, Eurozone in particular, has to uh, replace building on the data for, the, for Q2, the, um, the uh, uh, external, uh, external demand. Now, overall, the recovery in the Euro area is likely to be modest and gradual. Uh, Lackluster uh, economic growth does not come uh, here as a surprise, uh, as it is in line with past experience of recoveries following systemic financial uh, uh, crisis. I mean, the uh, historical experience also tells us that uh, there is, after these uh, episodes of financial crisis, there is a need for balance sheet uh, repair by households and firms, as well as uh, sectoral rebalancing between tradables and non-tradables, which typically hold back demand away on the on labor markets. And this is, uh, you can recognize, is also the experience of, uh, of Ireland, but it's also true for uh, several other countries for the euro area uh, as a whole. If one looks at the, the story about uh, what has been called you know, a balance sheet recession, namely the need of deleveraging after a period of bonanza and irrational exuberance, this affects the um, advanced economies uh, uh, in general. However, the speed of recovery since the, uh, the Great Recession, 2008, 2009, has not been the same across the advanced, uh, advanced economies. You can see it here. Here you have the 
gross domestic product uh, with the index, so put 100, 2008, and the development since, uh, uh, since then, I put in also Ireland here for uh, your uh, um, reference. And you, we can see that uh, um, the behavior has been uh, diversified within Europe, but we have performed overall less well than the US. I've not here, I don't have here other uh, G7 uh, countries, but for instance, if you take Canada, it would be even better than, uh, than, this, picture, uh, than this picture here. So uh, if one then tries to explain what happened here, what underpins this, uh, different, uh, this different behavior, uh, the conclusion is that there is one notable factor that is behind this, and it is, it is the more drawn out contraction of investment uh, in the euro area compared to other advanced economies compared to the US. Now in the US, investment fell sharply in 2008-2009, but has regist registered positive growth in 10 out of uh, 14 quarters since the beginning of 2010. In the euro area, on the other hand, investment briefly pick picked up in 2010, but then declined for eight straight quarters thereafter. So the policies to uh, that we have to, un to, to uh, undertake and implement to sustain the recovery, have to have a particular look at, the, at, at underpinning investment. So this is, I think, is particularly uh, important. Otherwise, the recovery is not going to be um, as sus uh, sustained. And we know that investment has the double feature. It is a component of domestic demand, so it helps on the domestic demand side, but it also helps to build productive capacity. So it is important also from the point of, from the point of view of medium to long run, the supply side of the, um, of the economy, and therefore the impact uh, on uh, the performance of the economy, competitiveness, and the labor, and the labor market. So what then, the, the, the subsequent question is, uh, how come uh, investment uh, behaved so poorly uh, in the euro area? Not uniformly, but certainly less uh, uh, well than, uh, than, for instance, in the US. And I think in the literature, there is a rather <coughs> general consensus or emerging consensus that balance sheet, uh, the bank balance sheet repair is what is underpinning this. I mean, we have not in Europe done uh, early on in, this, in the initial phase of the cycle, the balance sheet repair that the US did success successfully in 2008 and 2009. So bank balance sheet repair has been markedly slower in the Euro area and uh, this uh, slow progress is weighing on both credit demand and credit supply and thereby on, uh, on investment. Now, Ireland, in Ireland, both banks and households have made considerable progress in reducing uh, the pre-crisis buildup of debt. Banks are no longer excessively dependent either on volatile market funding or on euro system liquidity. For households, uh, initiatives underway to deal with unsustainable mortgage debt will eventually improve the outlook for private uh, consumption. Now, balance sheet repair uh, in the euro area has been also hampered by what is by now the well-known faults in the architecture of monetary union or that we are right now trying to mend. Mm. In particular, the absence of a proper banking union, uncoordinated national responses uh, to banks' balance sheet, uh, balance sheet difficulties have led to a negative feedback loop between sovereign uh, and banks. And all this has resulted in, uh, in a damaging degree of fragmentation uh, across the single financial uh, markets. And this has been reflected in large disparities, not only uh, on, in yields on sovereign bonds, but also in lending conditions to enterprises. And you can see it here clearly in this uh, uh, in this slide, you have uh, you have three uh, groups. You have from this is the lending to um, uh, so loans to enterprise 
new business maturity up to one year and you can see the three the three groups you have um, uh, you have a clear a differentiation between uh, <coughs> here Germany France on the one hand on the opposite side of the spectrum you have uh, um, Portugal, uh, Greece, and you have the uh, you have the, those uh, in between uh, also. This is uh, the financial uh, fragmentation, which is clearly hampering the functioning of the uh, of the of, of the single market, but also hampering the um, uh, the recovery. So uh, I think uh, proceeding speedily as agreed uh, to uh, banking union. Uh, we have the next steps, which are clearly laid out. I think is is essential to um, overcome the um, the uh, the uh, uh, the problems that we can see here, which uh, uh, which uh, uh, hinders the uh, hinder the recovery. Now, uh, clearly, uh, if one has to identify what would be the main obstacles, the main risks to the, a continuous recovery. I mentioned before the external side. One can talk about also the geopolitical risks. Uh, we know that uh, you know, oil prices, uh, energy, I mean, uh, the events that we have, uh, we have witnessing in the Middle East uh, uh, now. But if one has to pinpoint one uh, risk only as the major one, for me, it would be the uh, lack of delivery on uh, uh, commitments taken. Uh, at the level of the euro area or at the level of the nation of of, of, uh, um, uh, of member states so we have to uh, make sure that we do not uh, run uh, the ri this risk and we continue to deliver according to the calendar that has been uh, that has been uh, 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 agreed upon um, we are uh, clearly in a, in a position which is con I mean, considerably better enormously better than we were only uh, 18 months ago, uh, or even uh, less than that, when there were looming risks of uh, disintegration of the of the euro area, these have been uh, they have uh, you know vanished. Uh, I think delivering of commitments uh, on uh, uh, on the ESM, uh, on banking union, you know, but especially uh, on the announcement of OMT, clearly led the markets uh, to. Um, put aside the catastrophic risks of uh, uh, euro area um, uh, breakup, but we have to make sure that we do not end up in the in in a situation in which these catastrophic risks uh, of you know euro area uh, um, uh, breaking up will be uh, replaced by a prolonged period of stagnation, which I think would be extremely uh, hard to take. Uh, and, uh, and would be you know, politically and socially uh, unsustainable. So this is the, uh, what is in front, uh, in front of us. Now, coming to the policy responses, I think they come out quite naturally from what I have said uh, uh, so far, but I think we, the policy agenda uh, that we uh, need to pursue, I think has uh, to uh, include a combination of targeted and self-reinforcing uh, measures aiming, aiming at restoring a fully, um, a fully financial uh, system and enhancing the, the growth prospects in the, medium, in the medium term. Action is needed at the European and at the national uh, level, both uh, on the demand side by boosting investment demand and on the supply side by accelerating the much needed structural change in the economy. Delivery in three key areas is important. First, banks' balance sheet repair and overcoming financial fragmentation as part of the progress towards banking union, first area. Second is the structural reform agenda. And third, it is a differentiated and credible fiscal policy stance. Now, on the first one, the completion of a fully-fledged banking union is critical to ensure financial stability, reverse the process of financial fragmentation, and restore the flow of credit to the corporate sector. So, so banking, delivery on banking union you know, is essential to preserve and to restore the integrity of the single market, to make sure that adjustment within the euro area functions properly, 
and third, to underpin the recovery. So it is really absolutely, um, absolutely key. The European Union has uh, made good progress in developing the pillars of banking union as a cornerstone of EMU. Now, the adoption of the single supervisory mechanism uh, on the 12th of September uh, by the European Parliament represents a major success uh, in, in a critical uh, step. In front of us, we are going to have the asset quality review, now dubbed uh, balance sheet uh, assessment, and stress test, which will have to be uh, carried out in advance of the transfer of the supervision mandate to the ECB. And this uh, process here will be uh, key to dispel any remaining uncertainty around the underlying health of, balance, of bank's balance sheet and therefore expect a stringent, and uh, I expect, and uh, the Commission is, go is going to push for a, uh, for a credible, uh, highly credible uh, exercise. Um, this is the first point, which is uh, the uh, implementation of the single supervisory mechanism from the legal uh, adoption, which has just uh, taken place, to the actual uh, implementation. And with the ECB, let's say, taking over the responsibility for supervision in uh, the banking union. Uh, but we have other pillars of banking union. The um, bank uh, resolution across member states cannot be led uh, with uh, you know, divergent uh, uh, approaches. So we need to make progress in establishing a robust, harmonized resolution framework at the European level. And this is a natural complement of uh, uh, supervision at the European, uh, European level. Uh, reaching a swift agreement of the bank uh, resolution restructuring di directive and subsequently the deposit guarantee scheme directive will be the uh, critical step in this, uh, in this direction. Um, all this along with the agreed uh, uh, capital requirement directive and regulation will be critical in establishing a set of harmonized uh, uh, rules that can ensure a level playing field uh, across uh, member states. The Commission has proposed a single resolution mechanism. In July, there is a commitment of the Council to adopt it, to discuss and adopt this uh, um, uh, quickly uh, by the end uh, of the year. And we uh, have to make sure that uh, the uh, proposal of the Commission is, uh, uh, is adopted, will be negotiated, but the key element uh, elements, which is a robust uh, uh, single resolution mechanism with a single resolution fund, will be uh, withheld in uh, the uh, process of uh, negotiation. Now, Ireland is also taking important steps to ensure that its banks are in the best possible shape as the banking union uh, uh, enters into force uh, next year. The authorities are carrying out a balance sheet assessment this year to um, uh, inform uh, banks uh, financial planning and assessment of impairment uh, provision going forward. Efforts are also being made to ensure that uh, banks um, deal decisively with mortgage arrears in, in, an, in an ambitious but differentiated uh, manner, offering sustainable long-term uh, mortgage restructuring solutions to genuine, genuinely distressed uh, households. And all this while restoring payment discipline in other arrear uh, cases. Only then, also only after the uh, asset quality review, we'll see tangible results in reducing the still growing stock of non-performing loans, which in turn will enhance profitability prospects and fully alleviate uh, concerns about banks' solvency. So, and all this will help in spur new uh, lending to underpin the recovery of the Irish uh, uh, economy. So five years after the start of the crisis, it is critical that banks here in this country, elsewhere in Europe, uh, make real progress in addressing these uh, issues. We have also on the financial fragmentation and financial market functioning, there is the issue of uh, uh, access to financing by SMEs, which is also vital given the essential role this sector plays in employment uh, uh, creation. Specific eff efforts should be made to restore 
credit flow to SMEs in the vulnerable countries uh, of the euro area. They, they are the main driver of investment and employment in Europe, and they have been overly hit by financial fragmentation. We are working with the European Investment Bank and also with the ECB to finalize uh, an SME initiative, and we call upon uh, the ECOFIN Council and the European Council to make the necessary decision to implement it swiftly. Sustainable growth must be underpinned by reforms that will address productivity uh, and price and non-price competitiveness. So this is the second uh, area, the structural reform uh, uh, side. Uh, to facilitate rebalancing, reallocation of resources, mitigate the risks of hysteresis affecting the labor market, and, all, and this um, uh, need to foster uh, structural reforms holds true both in vulnerable countries as well as in core countries of the, uh, of the Eurozone. Member states, um, especially the currently most vulnerable ones, are making big effort to tackle the serious structural problems that built up over the last decade. Wide-ranging reforms have been implemented in recent years to correct the imbalances built up in the past and shift the economy onto a more sustainable growth uh, path. While some of these reforms will take time, we know, to, pr to produce their full effects, improvements are visible uh, already. Ireland has made an impressive start in this adjustment process, both in terms of the policy initiatives from the government and the resilient and resilience and determination shown by citizens throughout this difficult time. All this, I'm confident, will pay off. Nevertheless, we should also acknowledge that member states can uh, and should still do more to, to boost the competitiveness of the economy. I think labor costs play an important role in this context and might be, must be kept in line with uh, productivity growth. This is uh, um, prescribed in the country-specific recommendations adopted by EU as part of the so-called EU uh, semester, and this is essential to bring down the unacceptably high level of unemployment. Stronger uh, competition in product and service market is also essential to enhance productivity level, uh, levels and lower uh, prices, and it's also important for the rebalancing of, uh, within, uh, within the, euro, the euro area. Finally, member states clearly need to step up their innovation uh, efforts and continue to shift production patterns toward high value added uh, activities. Now, experience has shown that reforms in different areas support uh, each other and they will help make the recovery sustainable by facilitating the allocation of labor and capital. This in turn will benefit the employment situation and also ensure that the recovery is increasingly based on domestic demand. Very, very high uh, unemployment in Ireland is part, is uh, in, um, in large part a legacy of previous over-reliance uh, on construction sector. Uh, Ireland is on its way to rebalancing its growth model. The performance of the services sector has been impressive, uh, for instance. But extensive policy actions uh, such as the labor activation measures and reskilling are needed to forcefully bring down unemployment, especially for those who have been out of work for a long period. The benefits of these structural reforms will only be seen over time, as I indicated before, but nevertheless, we urge the Irish authorities to push forward as much as possible in this uh, area. After years of effort, reform fatigue is discernible in a number of member states, but now it is not the time to relax our efforts. So this is on the structural reform side, and finally, uh, a differentiated and credible fiscal consolidation is also key in paving the way to sustainable growth. In the current juncture, the primary objective is to reduce currently elevated debt ratios, present, which, is, which are present in many countries. This is essential to bolster, to bolster economic growth and dispel market concerns about fiscal sustainability, especially in the euro area. Furthermore, uh, medium-term objectives need 
need to take into account also the medium to long-term challenges to public finances, such as the projected increase in age-related health and long-term uh, uh, care system of, uh, of expenditure. In the euro area, each member state faces a differentiated pace of fiscal consolidation according to its initial budgetary position and hence its fiscal space, economic conditions, and sustainability positions. This means that efforts are inevitably uh, larger in member states facing more restricted market access and lower for member states with greater, greater fiscal space. In addition, given the focus of fiscal consolidation on the medium term, it is normal that consolidation strategies take into account country-specific uh, uh, elements. Now, Ireland has made considerable strides towards putting public finance uh, in, in, on a more sustainable footing, but the fiscal deficit remains large and the debt ratio high. Other challenges to uh, public finances, such as weak growth and agile, aging population, still loom large. The authorities should continue to stick to their outline course uh, and thereby continue to honor the commitments under the financial assistance program in a way that is uh, as equitable, durable, and growth friendly as possible. For the euro area, the sizable fiscal efforts undertaken so far and the t deterioration of the economic uh, situation in um, 2012 has, uh, have led to a moderation of the consolidation plans in some member states since uh, last spring. This moderation was uh, done in line with the flexibility offered by the EU uh, fiscal uh, surveillance framework, which makes a clear distinction between uh, the underlying consolidation effort and the budgetary impact of, the, of economic development that uh, are uh, not under the control of governments. So it is expected that in 2013 and 2014, the impact of fiscal consolidation growth would uh, uh, recede. Overall, the medium-term plans presented by the uh, member states in spring uh, in their uh, stability programs are appropriate, appropriately differentiated. Large adjustment already undertaken should allow a less negative impact of future consolidation on growth. However, efforts on the composition, so the quality of the adjustment need to be pursued to preserve growth-friendly expend expenditures and tax reform should be carefully designed also to preserve equity. Monitoring the appropriateness of fiscal consolidation strategy is a continuous uh, exercise. In this context, the Commission will carefully review the upcoming draft budgetary plans in the euro area. All countries of the euro area have to submit that this autumn and, and also provide an assessment of the uh, overall uh, situation uh, in, the euro, uh, in the euro area. Now, to conclude, ladies and gentlemen, um, implementing uh, uh, rapidly and with determination the self-reinforcing measures that I have uh, uh, outlined here would support confidence and address the exceptionally high level of economic and policy uncertainty, um, while also paving the way for more robust medium-term growth in the euro area as a whole and also in Ireland. The benefits of dispelling policy uncertainty should not be underestimated. There is empirical evidence that uncertainty can significantly and negatively weigh on public uh, on private spending and uh, economic growth by giving uh, agents an incentive to postpone investment, consumption, and employment decision. You can see this uh, in this slide here, which is my, uh, my final one, which uh, you can see the very close uh, correlation between uh, uh, investment as a ratio to GDP and an indicator of policy, uh, of policy uncertainty. So you can see that when uh, uh, policy uncertainty uh, increases, and here is uh, the, the downside, you have a negative uh, impact on, uh, uh, on, uh, on investment. So this, uh, 
so dispelling uh, policy uncertainty, sticking to the commitments, I think is the, the name of the game uh, at the national level, as well as the Euro area, uh, at the Euro area level uh, as a whole. Higher confidence, lower uncertainty, and a better access to credit would support firms' investment, and short-term economic growth would, uh, uh, <coughs> would also make more ambitious uh, the effects of uh, uh, structural reforms in a, in a, in a uh, say, virtuous uh, uh, cycle. Procrastination, I think, would be, uh, would be a big mistake uh, uh, now. Uh, so we have to, and this is a light motive, I repeated uh, several times, I mean, to stick to the, um, to the uh, announcement uh, made and not uh, um, uh, you know, reverse uh, decision on which, on which uh, uh, we have uh, um, uh, commitments at the highest uh, level. Ireland has been leading the way for vulnerable countries uh, with its commitment to adjustment and stay in the reform course, and the uh, country's efforts are paying off with a return to growth, renewed investor confidence, access uh, to uh, markets uh, again. Uh, but it is definitely, and I think it's very clear from what I have said repeatedly, is not time to rest on our laurels. Um, instead, we must continue to work so that the vicious circles that have marred the euro area economy in the past are turning into a powerful virtuous uh, circle where growth feeds confidence and confidence further underpins the recovery. If we, relax, if we relax the efforts now, the hard-won gains achieved so far will be lost. Thank you.